I want to talk to you some about hearing the voice of God. Probably one of the questions I get asked the most. One of the things that I get yelled at the most for. Even people that hear God, that know they hear God, that count on hearing God, scream and yell and make a big fuss because I say I hear God. <clears throat> the thing is, mostly they seem to be mad because they don't hear God the way I say that I hear God. Which I don't see the problem with because I don't say that I hear God the way they hear God. I was, uh, one Wednesday night, I was at a great big church down in Springfield, Missouri. Big congregation, giant pole barn with a pointy thing on top. And uh, I was driving by on the highway. It was a Wednesday night. They have a prayer service. Lord says, go in there. But I don't want to go in there. The last time I came through town, you had me, like, crush it and ask you to rebuild it the way you want. In the spirit, of course. And uh, why am I going in there? He's like, uh, they're having a prayer meeting. That's what you do. Go in and pray. All right, so I go in. They got like a thousand people on a Wednesday night prayer meeting, and uh, they hand you two or three little cards at the door of prayer requests that they've gathered from people on Sunday and whatever. And <clears throat> so they play music for about twenty minutes, and then talk to the five or six people around you, pray for them, and then pray for the cards for a while, and then the pastor preaches a sermon for half an hour at a prayer meeting. Anyway, I pray for the two or three people that I got cards for, and, and then they say, well, if you didn't get any cards when you came in, put your hand up, and the ushers will give you some. So I stick my hand out, because the Lord says, yeah, that, you can pray for more than three people. So I, I, he gives me some more, and I'm like, no, come on, give me some more, give me some more. So he gives me a whole stack of them. So I'm praying for all of them, whipping through, you know, Lord, please give me a new car. Yeah, right. I ain't giving her a new car. Pray for her to get humility and wisdom. Okay, whatever. Lord. And some people that are sick and some people that need deliverance and some people that need all kinds of stuff. And then he starts preaching. And uh, I, I saw Usher still have a big stack of their cards. So the Lord says, get up and go pray for whoever didn't get prayed for. Because we got more cards than people. Because there's like 5,000, 6,000 on a Sunday and 1,000 at the prayer meeting, whatever. Anyway, so I go back in the back and I ask the usher, say, where's all the ones that didn't get handed out? And he said, well, there's buckets inside the four doors to the sanctuary. There's a bucket in there and all the ones that didn't get handed out, they go back in the bucket. Oh, okay. So the Lord says, yeah, go. So I go over to the door. I kneel down right inside the door. There's a, a like a bucket planter thing there and so I grab the handful and I'm praying for all those Lord says go to the next door so I go over well while I'm doing that the pastor's talking about fasting and prayer and hearing the voice of God and I'm kind of like listening to him and I don't want to really be listening to him but he's going on about how he's really suspicious of anybody that says they have this kind of conversational dialogue with God he talks about all the times he heard God and it was dead on accurate and it was like word of knowledge and it was you know uh, turned out to be perfectly true and whatever and times when he was fasting and he heard really good when he was fasting and and uh, but then he goes on and on about you know how sort of special he is and how really the average Joe can't really hear God like that and I want to get up and argue with him and the Lord's like shut up you're not here to listen to him talk about how to hear God you're here to pray for these people all right, so I'm praying, but I keep getting distracted by stupid stuff he's saying, and I want to go yell at him. The Lord's like, knock it off. Just keep praying for them. So I pray for the last of them, get up and leave. But he, he confessed that when you're fasting, you're going to hear better. Now, if you fast from chocolate, you know, you might hear 1% better. If you fast from something you're not supposed to be doing anyway, like, okay, Lord, I'm going to fast from porn for you. Okay, well, 
yeah, okay, that was clogging you up, and getting that out will probably help and everything, but, you know, that's kind of what you're supposed to be doing. I mean, you're supposed to get a good grade on the test. Um, you know, you're supposed to pass the test. You're, you know, so it... <clears throat> now, you fast without food for 30 days, for whatever, however long... Okay, that's going to help. You're going to hear good. You fast without food and water? Well, that's a that's a good one. That's an Esther fast in the Bible. Um, you know. If you want to hear God real good, like all the time, in whatever way he wants to talk to you, um, you could fast from like family, wife, kids, money, job, reputation, respect, food, water, uh... A uh, house, a uh, stable environment, um, you know, clothes you like, whatever. Oh, yeah, you just start racking that stuff up, I bet you start hearing him real good. In fact, if you fast from everything you want so that you can just do what he wants, then you'll be fasting all the time, and whatever big demon wants to come mess with you, you'll probably be ready because you'll be praying and fasting all the time because your life will be a prayer. He says, you got to pick up your cross and follow him if you want to be his disciple. you got to surrender all. Compared to your love for him, your love for your own family should be hate. That's how far above the closest human relationships you have your relationship with him should be. <clears throat> if you're not hearing him, or you're hearing him sporadically, it's not because he's not talking to you. It's not because he doesn't love you. It's not because he doesn't want to direct all your paths. He knows the name of every atom, every snowflake, every leaf. He knows what you should have for lunch. He knows what kind of shirt you should wear. If you're of the opinion that God doesn't have an opinion on what shirt you should wear, what kind of God are you worshiping? How sovereign is he? How omnipotent and omniscient. What does omniscient mean except that he knows everything? <clears throat> a brother called me one time to give me sort of a prophetic word. And it was really sort of a prophetic question. And it was real simple. He said, how do you love God more? Like, ooh. Yeah, that's cool. I don't know. Lord, how do I love you more? He says, obey better. So I'm like, uh, okay, I hear, obey better. Yeah, that's right. That's the right answer. <clears throat> then what? Uh, okay, well, if you were obeying generally, now obey specifically. If you were obeying eventually, now obey immediately. You know? <clears throat> okay, well, then what? Well, okay, Lord, then what? Then teach other people to do it. If you love me, you will obey me. And the way you will obey me is by making disciples. And oh, oh, disciples are people that love me and obey me and make disciples. If you want to hear him better, it's real simple. Fast from everything you want. Everything you desire, every goal, every dream, every everything. Lay it all on the altar and mean it all the way and let him take it if he wants to. I bet you'll hear him real good after that. Hold it in a closed fist, refuse to let him have it. I don't think you'll hear too good on those things. And if you're not careful, he'll break your fingers off and pry it out and take it anyway. Because he's a jealous God. And if you've got your fingers wrapped around a trot tight, squeezing it in a fist, it's an idol. Whether it's a doctrine or a dogma or your kids, or your wife, your reputation, whatever. If you don't hold it in an open hand, he's liable to take it anyway. He did with me. And it hurt bad. But I hear him better now. And I'm glad he did it. 
Thanks for listening.